Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Creator, our Parent, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, and we said, Amen. Amen. Well, you got the whole message, I believe, through the young worshippers' message. So I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Pastor, Gen <laughs> Pastor Genesis, I always have something else to say. Well, yes, I have something else to say. But I just want to maybe spend a few minutes with you uh, reflecting on this passage because last Sunday, Pastor Jenna was reminding us of the blessedness, of the gift of blessedness that we have received. And she was telling us that the Beatitudes means that we are, what is that, Pastor Jenna? Supreme blessed, right? We have... And, and, and we sometimes tend to think of this blessedness as something that is so private, so personal that we put it in the box and we keep it to ourselves. In some ways, it gets an abstraction in our lives. It becomes something that we know. It becomes a concept. It, it is not something that becomes intellectual and we just know it. But I think that today's passages are inviting us to think beyond that. So as I was reading the passages, these two passages that we read this morning by Mary and Ben, or siblings, I was, there were two specific lines that really captivated me, that really called my attention, that I think, I believe, that they speak to us in the moment of our lives where we are living here in this world. The first one of them is from the book of Isaiah, and I will use the, the, first, the first slide that, we, that I prepared, and I would like just to ask you to read. I always forget, yeah. So as you can see, this is taken from the message, and I intentionally wanted to use the message because sometimes it makes me kind of come down to earth a little bit more with the language that, that he uses. Um, so he says, I will, always, I will always show you where to go. I'll give you full life in the emptiest of places. And I'm going to stop there. It continues, but I'm going to stop there. I will give you full life in the emptiest of places. And this line really caught my attention because I believe that these, these words, this promise speaks to us for where we are right now in our lives. Maybe the question for me, the question for you, the question for all of us who are participating here and online is, what may be the emptiest of places in our lives? Can you think? What may be the emptiest of places in your life? How have you been able to go through these emptiest of places? What would a full life mean in the emptiest of places in your life? As I was looking, listening to the news through the week, as I've been reading some articles, it just touches me, it makes me feel sometimes, I don't know the word, unsettled maybe, restless, to see all the socioeconomic realities that we are facing as a society. Wars in the making. It seems like every week we have a news about a new war that we are starting or being involved in. The inflicted fear by those in power into the regular people of our society no matter in the whole spectrum, political spectrum, no matter where we look at, it is about inflicting fear of the other. The desire of control and almost the limitless ways to get that control. In a more personal level, I have been reading and listening and hearing and seeing stories of the challenges of parenting, the complexities of parenting in this age. 
in trying to guide our children in a time when depression and anxiety is sky skyrocketing among our young generations. The inability for young generations to get a home or even to think about the future. And for our elderly, the challenges of care, medication, support, and the care sometimes of society. To me, maybe these are just some signs of the emptiest of places that we are facing as human beings, as community, as society. And yet, in the midst of this reality, we hear the words of God that tells, you, that tells us, I will give you a full life in the midst of your, in the, in the emptiest of places, in the midst of all these questions that you have. I was watching a video some time ago um, by uh, Chris Hedges, who was doing a presentation at a church. Chris Hedges, for those of you who do not know him, I have mentioned about him. He's a journalist. He used to uh, go to the Divinity School. His father was a pre uh, Presbyterian pastor. And Chris Hedges is um, teaching in a maximum security prison. He's teaching literature and English. And he's talking about his interaction and his connection with the prisoners. And he says and talks about how the the, the, the jail system in the U.S., which, by the way, is one of the largest, has the largest population in the world. Um, he talks about his interactions and his relationship with the prisoners, with the inmates. And one thing that really connected me with the, with the, with the passage in Isaiah is that Chris Hedges says that when we make the oppressed an abstraction, it leads us to despair. But when we love them, when we see their faces, we cannot betray them. And I think that this is what happens. For the, for the season of Advent, we have been talking about God's manifestation, helping us to understand how God relates us with us, how God sees our faces, how God in Jesus Christ connects with our lives, how God by no means is going to betray us because God loves us in such a way. When I say us, it's not this community. It's talking about the entire creation. And God can never, ever make us an abstraction. Because when we see an abstraction, we make whatever we want out of it. In fact, I don't know if this is upside down. This abstraction, it is blue, white, yellow. That's the name of it. Well, it's obvious that you can make up anything that you want from this abstraction. And I think that when we make a person an abstraction, when we make the circumstances of a person that people experience in daily life an abstraction, that's what it is. Is something we think about, something we talk about, something we debate about, but we do not connect in a personal, intimate way that helps us to see the reality of a God who has come into the world, in Jesus Christ, to be one of us, to suffer with us, and to face the complexities of the life in this world. The Lord Jesus Christ has called us blessed. Blessed are you. But if we are the blessed people of God, we are not just an abstraction in the eyes of God. We are God's people. And the Lord Jesus Christ is helping us to come down to this, down to earth and with symbols as simple as a light or the salt. Jesus Christ helps us to see the way that God in earthly ways connects with you and with me, and the invitation and the challenge to connect with one another. When I was in Thailand, there was a, a keynote presenter who was challenging us to think about how we are going to comfort one another, because the theme was comfort, comfort my people, from the, from the same book of Isaiah. And then, 
she was inviting us to think on how we can walk with people who are marked by the scars and the wounds of people who have experienced ab abuse, sexual, verbal, and physical abuse. And among those, the, the conversation, there was a young, uh, well, everybody was young there, as I told you, I, I was one of the oldest there. So, but one of the youngest people was telling us a story. She was telling us, how do we respond to the realities of people? And we do not live in the abstraction of just knowing that something bad is happening to someone, but how we connect with people. And she said that she had a friend who used to put on social media posts. And for a number of weeks, she was posting um, some things that were kind of leading or leaning towards taking her life. This, this person who was sharing said, when I saw that, I thought, well, she's going to be okay. Tomorrow she will send another, another, we will post something else and it will be okay. The next day came and there was no post anymore. And she learned that her friend had, had taken her life. I will give you a full life in the emptiest of places. I believe that you and I are called to recognize the emptiest of places in our lives, the ones that we create for others, and to uh, uh, recognize our lives because in re that will help us to realize the need that you and I have for the promise that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us for the call that Jesus Christ has for you and for me. In the next slide, you will see, and I would like to invite you to read what the Lord Jesus Christ, and I hope that you can see what is there. This is also from the message. And if you can see, uh, let's read together. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt, seasoning, that brings out the God's flavors of this earth. You are here to be light, bring out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. The Lord Jesus reminds us what the purpose of our lives is here. It is not to see every person and the circumstances around them as abstractions as an opportunity to walk together, to be salt, to be light, as, no, as, as, as earthly as that. And to conclude, just let me tell you a story that John Jolly, our dear sister John Jolly and I had just a few minutes, a, a few days ago in my office as we were reflecting on this. She and I, we were talking about a neighbor who passed away and he was a person who experienced a tragedy in his life, early in his life, losing his family. He suffered from alcoholism, and he was suffering also or experiencing homelessness. One of the emptiest of places that maybe someone can live in. He passed away. We are celebrating his life next week. But John Jolly was telling me that even he was living in that reality, in the emptiest of places, he was able to bring out the God flavors and the God colors of this earth and this world. As he was a mentor, as he walked with, and as he accompanied others who were experiencing homelessness around him. So it doesn't matter where we are in our journey, in what places we are in our life, you and I are the blessed people of God who has received the gift of salt and light to be shared and to make it as real for others, but at the same time to be willing to be vulnerable, to receive the light and the salt that others may bring in our lives. Because it is only when you and I learn to be vulnerable 
that the full life in the emptiest of places can happen. In the second story, another neighbor was the last Sunday, and one of the neighbors came and was with us. And remember, we had coffee, and I think there is coffee today, but that's for, for later. But he was drinking coffee here. Many of you spoke with him, embraced him, and shared the light and the salt with him. To the point that he shared with John, with John Jolly, that he felt so glad, so welcome, so embraced, that he didn't feel that he was treated with pity or, or that, he, that he has been uh, seen as less. And to me, this is a sign of how we can live in the emptiest of places, the full life that God has given us as we accompany each other. As congregation, we remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you who you are. For the next months, we will enter a journey in which, as a congregation, we will try to identify what we what, we, what makes us to be the salty people, as John Tobin told us last, last Wednesday in the Bible study, that makes, us life, that makes this life flavorful and colorful in this place for one another. I invite you to see each other's face, never making others and their struggles an abstraction, but to, deba to be debated or for self-gratification, but to be open and vulnerable to the reality that we may be in the emptiest of places, but that we are the blessed ones, and that you and I remember the words that the Lord is with us. Let's read together the version of Isaiah in the message. This was not included in the, in the bulletin, but it's the three verses that follow. The, ver the, the, the part that we read today. So I invite you to read with me if you are able to see. I will always show you where we to go. I will give you a full life in the emptiest of places. Firm muscles, strong bones. You'll be like a well water garden. You will use the old rubble of past lives to build anew, reveal the foundation from out of your past. You will be known as those who can fix anything, restore all ruins, rebuild and renovate, make the community livable again. And this is the journey that we go as a community of salty people. Thanks be to God for this blessing.